Previously, we showed you three amazing constant effect rings, Denstagmer's ring, the ring of Fine Aster, and Marora's ring, and added them to our jewelry collection. Today, we'll be featuring three more extremely powerful rings that are attached to various faction quests. Be aware that seeking these out early may interfere with certain quests, but I'll give you the rundown on each and let you know what associations they carry. They'll also be a little more difficult to acquire, but a well-geared character should keep these in mind. The first target today is one that is up to its third and thus far final appearance in an Elder Scrolls game, the Warlock's Ring. This crimson circlet carries a considerable cast, granting Reflect 10 to 20 points for 30 seconds and fortifying your speed for the same. So this is definitely a tool to save for when you need to urgently flee from monsters, bandits, social interaction. In Arena and Daggerfall, this ring also carried a Restore Health enchantment, which totally plays into its theme. But for some reason, this enchantment was cut from Morrowind. The Warlock's Ring belonged originally to, get this, a mage. But not just any mage, the legendary McDonald's Golden Arch Mage, Cirabane, who much like Finaster, used his Ring of Power to guard his cheeks in combat. But the Hand of Time claps all in the end. So Cirabane copied off Finaster's homework one more time and added an enchantment on the ring that would cause it to flee its masters and only bear true loyalty to him. Normally, you would hear about this ring from a local cat lady and suspected mushroom addict, Dejira, from the Mages Guild, but only after you've found the Staff of Magnus. But that requires you to have achieved Warlock rank, and I don't have time to play Harry Potter today, Steve. So let's go get it without Crazy Cat Lady's help. We'll need to make our way down to the area around Vardenfell Rock City, or Ball Fell if you want to be all proper about it. The small island, directly east of Drop Testicle, holds a small cave named Asherbaton. Before you embark upon this particular quest, be certain you have a reliable means of reaching high places, as we'll need to do so to get in and out of the cave. I wanted to be all fancy and levitated in from Tel Brunora and quite literally flew through the first part of this dungeon. But inside we'll find an Atronach, as well as a large drop into a pool of water. Straight back from that is a small alcove with a Dremora and a chest decorated with various skulls. In the chest is a key that we'll use in the next section. Unholy beast, go away! We need to head back to the central chamber and look up to the left, and you'll see our next area. Make your way up and take down the astronaut waiting up here then proceed into the final room. You can just hang out down here and Vendema Drethen will come to greet you. She carries a Viper Blade, but her two dozen spells are by far the more deadly part of this package. Try to let her exhaust her magicka before dealing with her, but be aware that several of her spells are touch-based, so she may try to charge you without casting anything offensive first. Once she's down, we can pull the Warlock Ring from this Sorceress's Sorceress. Be sure to root around in her stuff, as I found many useful scrolls and potions while I was here, and two skill books as well. If you need another levitation option, there's a Potion of Rising Force here on the table, so grab it even if you aren't taking everything else. Next up on our list today is the Ring of the Wind. This blustery little beauty is a legendary treasure of elsewhere, a billowing boon from Kinnereth, or Kinarthi as the Khajiit know her. It was said to be owned by a nimble acrobat named Kasimba Springsnow, who was said to always land on her feet, except when she chose to land on the feet of others. Being a gift from a divine, you've probably figured out by now that this ring is associated with the Imperial Cult quest line, and is the first quest to feature Oracle Lelevarian, who recounted the previous quote. She sends you out to find this ring specifically. However, if you've already found it, it shouldn't cause any issues with completing the quest, Besides, the temple has a lot of what I like to call Finder's Keeper's quests that essentially act as direct instructions to go pick up this epic item and let you keep it when you return. If you were to just do this quest properly, you would be given a cryptic riddle that makes perfect sense in hindsight, but is absolutely useless to you going in. Let me just tell you the riddle and you tell me if it would be helpful. I have seen the wind upon a dark elf's hand the fire gleam on a dwarf's face, and darkness upon the ring of water, and heard no name whispered in the mouth of stone. The extra big brains among you may have picked up on the last bit at the end, heard no name whispered. This is similar to the door leading into the mines of Moria when the fellowship had to speak friend and enter. Naturally, any Gahamer Hudik 
knows the term no-name in Dumeris is Namu. And as all Tamrielic cartographers will tell you, Namu is the name of a secluded and reasonably hidden smuggler den nestled away on the western shores of Vardenfell, west of Telerune. See? Simple. The rest of it will make sense once we arrive, so get your gwar and gear and let's hit the road. Oh, and speaking of gear, be sure to bring at least one scroll of divine intervention. Not a spell, not an enchantment, you'll specifically need a scroll to get the special bonus items in this cave. The easiest way to get out here is to head to Telerune and go west from there until you reach the coast of the Grayslands. Even the UESP mentions that much like the riddle, this one is hard to identify until you've already figured it out. For general terrain markers, look for the Daedric ruins of Yansiramas to the southeast and the Dwemer stronghold of Phelan Serrano to the west. You'll be able to recognize Namu by the highly aesthetic septing stones leading up to the cave entrance. Upon entering Numa Numa, we'll be accosted by a Red Guard woman who really should have called in sick today. In the next room, we'll find a Dunmer archer on a raised platform. In the original game, she had 12 bows and only one arrow. I don't know what patch fixed this, but it's been corrected in my install. The rope bridge is a red herring. We instead want to go down this path, directly across from us where we enter the cave chamber. The path will curve around to your left, and we'll encounter another Dunmer. This one has a really nice little dagger for us to take, so now I have a reliable levitation option. No more chugging potions mid-flight, or fumbling with scrolls as I plummet to my imminent doom. Similar to the last cave, we can let this guy Glamis Dren do the heavy lifting for us. He already seems to be, with several pieces of Dwemer gear to lug around. More importantly, he has the Ring of the Wind. Now it all makes sense. The wind on his hand and all that. Now I'm gonna put some fire on his dwarf face. <laughs> Rummaging around on his person reveals the treasure we came here for, the Ring of the Wind, and its impressive constant effect of fortify agility for 30 points. This won't actually make you faster, but it'll make your attacks all the more accurate, and that's never a bad thing to put a ring on. a lot of pretty ladies around here. Now before you run off, make sure you go up to the covered area. There you'll find a red guard man named John Hawker. Give him a scroll of divine intervention, and he'll reward you with an amazing pair of gloves, Zenithar's warning with four enchantments covering demoralize, blind, and silence, and Zenithar's wiles with a powerful 1 to 50 charm enchantment. Not to mention the amazing scrolls and handfuls of other treasure laying around up here. For our final ring of the night, I figured we'd get a little more offensive. And what jewelry could be a better offensive weapon than the Vampiric Ring, with its amazing ability to drain 200 to 300 health and stamina per cast? This is quite possibly the most deadly ring in Morrowind, and its origins are shrouded in mystery. There are said to be tales of the ring's creation in Morrowind many centuries ago by a cult of vampire followers. Though the ring is clearly imbued with some dark power, no Daedric patron has claimed the artifact, and no mortal is known by name to be connected with it. All that we know is that it appears only briefly, and only every few hundred moons or so. Fittingly, this ring is locked away near the very edge of the base game map, in one of the more difficult areas of the map to traverse, the Sheagorid region. Not just that, but we'll need to make our way from Dagenfell to the far edge of the island and the Velothi Tower of Ald Redania. This tower was built back in the first era by Old Mary explorers while they were conducting their search for Old Old Maris. The inside of this place can vouch for this, as the tower is all but collapsing in on itself. Be careful in here, as there are numerous bone boys ready to clap your attributes, including some greater bone boys down in the basement that can do lasting damage. Our primary target is upstairs, thankfully. There are more bone boys in here, but the skeletal war wizard who is currently charging us with his hands up is the main thing to be worried about. Whatever you do, do not let him hit you, unless you're just grossly overpowered. Thankfully, the ring is on touch, so we can dance around the Skeleman until he casts twice. Then you're good to go in for the kill, as the ring can only be used twice from a full charge. A bit of a drawback to be sure, but this thing is equivalent to six full seconds of holding Keening. Before you leave the ruin, be sure to claim the final bonus for today. A very special item, and the one that ties this ruin into a quest line. This one is a Thieves Guild quest for Gentleman Jim Stacy. The Bitter Cup is an artifact of Clavica's file, and if you were to drink from it, your highest attribute would increase by 20, and your lowest would decrease by 20. With strategic planning and character design, this can be used to make all sorts of highly optimized characters straight from the start. These rings are incredibly useful, if slightly more difficult to acquire early on in the game, but now you'll know where to look when you're ready to add them to your own collection. 
As always, let me know what you get up to with these artifacts in the comments. Leave a like if you found this video to be helpful, subscribe if you want more like it, and join our new channel memberships for exclusive perks. Your feedback helps me decide what videos to focus on and just really brightens my day in general. We have so much exciting stuff coming, so stay tuned. For now, I've been Git Shiver, and I'll see you in the next one. Later!